on a cold November Sunday morn. An old man sits a while, looking through old photographs. He can't help but smile. They're all there, all the boys, with hair cut short and neat, uniforms of khaki, strong black boots upon their feet. They met as strangers, but soon became like brothers to the end. Smiling at the camera, there could be no truer friends. So many never made it home, lost on foreign shores. Many more were injured and would be the same no more. The old man's eyes mist with tears as he remembers every face, each of his fallen brothers and the killing which took place. He proudly dons his beret his blazer and his tie, for today he will remember the ones who fell and died. On his chest there is a poppy, a blaze of scarlet on the blue. He steps out into the cold. He has a duty he must do. Once at the cenotaph he stands among the ranks of those who march to war and those who manned the tanks. He bows his head in reverence as the last post begins to play and he wonders what will happen at the ending of his days. Will anyone remember? Will anybody care about the lad so far from home whose life was ended there? I wish that I could tell him that he should fear not for this soldiers and his brothers will never be forgot. We owe a debt of gratitude that we can never pay, and this country will remember them on each Remembrance Day. Welcome to worship. Today we come together to remember those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice in their service of their country in war. We remember those who have given of their lives for the sake of others. Our scripture reading for today includes the words of Jesus. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Let us pray together. Father, today as we remember those who have given their lives for others in service of their country, we pray that you will draw close to us in our worship this day, that you will bring comfort as we remember, that you will bring peace to us and to our world. We ask this simple prayer in the name of the one who gave of himself for us on the cross, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Let us join together in the words of Isaac Watts, the words have been adopted as a traditional hymn for today. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come.
the Bible reading this morning is taken from John chapter 15, verses 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remained in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love is no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I've learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. Amen. You may have seen these active service gospels that were used by chaplains in World War I in field services and contained not only the gospel message, but hymns and decision forms for soldiers' personal private dealings with God. Each gospel had a message on the inside front cover from Lord Roberts, hero of the Boer War. It urged, I ask you to put trust in God. And many did. Stories emerged that showed that these small booklets meant so much to those who received received them. Offering from family letters or from the belongings of those killed in action where they were discovered with them. These active service gospels were recreated for the 100th anniversary of the start of World War I. They contained first-hand stories from the front line, and they look and they feel just like the original gospel of a century ago. The invitation for us today is to reflect on the same words that the soldiers read and make our own response. It may be that you would like a copy to give to a colleague or a relative or a friend to read, and the stories that a contained within here, may just change their lives forever too. If you would like a copy of this to hand on to somebody else, please contact me. I have 30 copies and I'd be willing to send you one or two. During the First World War, there were over 43 million New Testaments and Gospels distributed to training corps, troops and civilians. One soldier who was sent a Gospel who had time on his hands, read and reread it. He had never shown an interest in spiritual things before, but the words of the gospel sunk in, and he became a changed man. There were hymns at the, the back of the book, and as he sang them to himself, he became known up and down the trench as Singing Jim. During a reconnaissance mission, a young soldier from Singing Jim's company was wounded between the trenches. A volunteer was asked for, and Singing Jim stepped forward to bring back the injured man under the cover of darkness. As he began crawling home with his friend on his back, a flare burst overhead, revealing their position. A single sniper shot rang out and Singing Jim was killed outright. In his pocket was a letter to his wife about how he had come to Christ, encouraging her to do the same. The wounded man offered to take the letter home to England and deliver it in person, telling Singing Jim's wife how her husband had laid down his life. 
the wounded man was given the letter and he did deliver it. But his company had one further request. While he was in England, could he pick up some more copies of the book Singing Jim was reading, which had affected him so much? Claim your copy. Get it to a friend. This book transforms life forever. And I'm sure today that we will not be the only church that will read from John chapter 15. This scripture is fitting for today as we remember the sacrifice given by our servicemen and women for our country and for us. The scripture speaks into our lives today as Christian people who, having accepted Jesus Christ into our own personal lives, seek to be fully devoted followers of Jesus, who seek to make fully devoted followers of Jesus. For that, to me, sums up the life of a Christian. Seek to be a fully devoted follower of Jesus, who seeks to encourage others to become fully devoted followers of Jesus. So on a day where the words sacrifice and cost will be frequently used in church services, on the TV and on radio broadcasts, as a fully devoted follower of Jesus, we consider this morning what sacrifice, what cost are we prepared to give for God? We consider what it means to be a friend of Jesus and also Jesus' command to love each other as I have loved you. Jesus' words in John 15 verse 13 have been acted on in different ways by different people. Jesus said, Greater love has no man than this that he lay down his life for his friends. Some have lived out these words in self-sacrificing service to others. Some have actually given their own lives so that the lives of others might be spared. All of us may be able to give examples of great personal sac sacrifice that we are aware of that has been given for others. At the time of the First World War, this verse was widely used in sermons, in lectures, it was set to music and sung by great choirs, but sadly, this verse was taken out of context and the text was used with one single meaning, that you, young man, because they were mostly young men, must go off to the front line, do what you're told, and if necessary, die for your country. Many thousands did, and many thousands died. In World War II, this literal laying down of one's life has been part of the story of an orthodox monastic saint, Mother Maria. She was imprisoned in the Ravensbrück concentration camp, having for years helped Jewish people and others escape arrest by the Nazis. Though her health quickly deteriorated in the camp, she was able to inspire other inmates with her unwaveringly certain and even cheerful faith in God. Survivors remember that she kept many from complete despair. It is said that Mother Maria took the place of an hysterical young woman in line to enter the gas chamber. And Mother Maria met her death on Holy Friday of 1945. As well as the scripture we have read this morning, there are other passages in Scripture that also suggest laying down our lives for others. 1 John chapter 3, verse 16 says, This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. Matthew Henry, in his commentary, says of this Christian love that it must be in the highest degree so fervent as to make us willing to suffer even to death for the good of the church and for the safety and salvation of others. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2, it says, Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. I remember a few years ago, specialing at a core for their core anniversary celebrations. The core had a guest YP band and singing company visiting on the Saturday evening. One member of the congregation was two-year-old Archie. 
Archie was being looked after his by his grandparents as his father was leading the band that evening. When Dad stood up to conduct, so did Archie. And from his place by his grandparents, baton in his hand, he imitated his father as he conducted the band. Paul in Ephesians 5 says, we should imitate Christ. Christ's love for us led him to sacrifice himself on the cross so that we might live. Our love for others should be of the same kind, a love that goes beyond affection to self-sacrificing service. That kind of love is not about self. It's all about others. The Life Application Study Bible of that passage in 1 John 3 that I referred to a moment ago says, real love is an action, not a feeling. It produces selfless, sacrificial giving. The greatest act of love is giving oneself for others. How can we lay down our lives? By serving others, with no thought of receiving anything in return. What is it then that God is saying to you that you need to give up to, to sacrifice, to be able to serve others? As we give up these things, and follow the leading of Christ, we will find ourselves living in tune with God's will for our life, which far outweighs any other reward that life can bring. And as Jesus says in verse 14, you are my friends if you do what I command. Who would not want to be considered a friend of Jesus? And in that verse, there are two key words, the word friend and the word command. I presume many, if not all of us, have people that we, we refer to as friends, people that we associate with, people with interests, ideas and passions that are similar to us, our own. You know, in, in the New International Version of the Bible, there are 161 times that the word friend or friends is used. From the original Hebrew and Greek there are 22 different Hebrew and Greek words that are translated into the English word friend or friends. So there is a vast array of meaning to the word friend in Scripture. The word friend found here in verse 14 is not just any old friend. It's not someone we would get together with occasionally. It is someone with whom we are very closely linked to. For instance, a, a husband, a wife. A brother, a sister, a parent, not just a casual acquaintance, but someone whom we are close to in a personal relationship. Jesus says, you are my friends. That is how close a relationship he wants with us. And that close a relationship is available to us all. We can all be friends of Jesus. Wow. Wow. The second part of verse 14 says, if you do what I command. Now, command is a word that sounds very authoritarian. A word which we maybe sit up and take notice. A word we had better not ignore as it's associated with people being in charge. And if they say something, we need to do it. In these days, restrictions are once again placed upon us. Some of the restrictions are commands enshrined in law, stopping us doing the things we love to do. And we become frustrated. And some are seemingly not able to obey the commands about these current restrictions that we have. And Jesus says, you are my friends if you do what I command. And many people who are not Christians would point to this verse to substantiate their claims that living a Christian life is just a list of things not to do, a list of restrictions, a list to lock us down from living life. We, of course, understand that is not the case. And in Christ, we live life and we live it to the full. The word command here in verse 14 of our passage is the most suitable English word we have when translating from the original Greek translation. In some ways, it is not the ideal word because it can give us a misleading interpretation of this verse. 
The original Greek would quote Jesus as saying we should live by his instructions that he has given to us. We should keep to those instructions. And if we do follow his instructions for life, then we are his friend. Again, as we have heard many times before, it's our choice to follow him and to be his friend, following his instructions. Conversely then, if we do not follow Jesus' instructions, we will not be known as a friend of Jesus. And I would suggest that that is not a good place to be. And finally this morning, we turn to verse 12. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. And the word command here is just that. It is a command. It is not advice. It is absolutely something that we must do. That as friends of Jesus, we are called to do. In Salvation Army terms, it's an order and regulation. And much like some of our orders and regulations, is this a command of Jesus that we forget? Or something we will only do if someone points it out to us? Or when it suits us? Or is it actually embedded into our DNA? How did Jesus love? He taught us how to love through his teaching. He showed us how to love with his compassion. He taught us how to love with a servant heart. He showed us how to love as he washed his disciples' feet. Jesus loved us with an agape love, selfless, sacrificial, unconditional love. And he commands us to do the same. He loved us so much that he willingly gave his life for you and for me when he had done nothing wrong. He paid the price when we had created the debt. Love each other as I have loved you, Jesus says. He doesn't say agree with each other on every little detail and do everything you can not to fall out because he knows we are human and that stuff happens. But he does say love each other as I have loved you. It's a command. It's not open to negotiation or interpretation. It is as clear as Jesus could make it. Love each other as I have loved you. You know, if human hearts became tender, if we truly live for others, giving when what we give is rejected, if we treated our foes as if they were the closest of friends, if we were to love where love is not returned, if we truly felt each other's sadness and attempted to dry each other's tears without judgment or prejudice, then the world will be full of friends. Then how much more shall God our Father in love forgive? On this Remembrance Sunday, when we think about the sacrifice that has been given for others, what will your response be to the Lord this day as we sing these words this morning that I've just outlined? Respond to the Lord. Then how much more Shall God our Father in love forgive?
Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for your word to us this morning. We thank you for your challenge. Lord, help us to have tender hearts, to live for others, to give where love is not returned, to treat our foes as if they were the closest of friends, and to truly feel each other's sadness and dry each other's tears without judgment or prejudice. God, our Father, may the commitments we have made to you in these moments not just be for now, but may they be commitments that we live out in the days and weeks and months ahead as we live our lives so that others may know we are friends of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for bringing us together in this way on this Remembrance Sunday to recall with tenderness and respect those who lost their lives from this community and the many thousands further afield in the wars of the last century. We pray for all those still caught up in conflicts around the world and acknowledge what may be our own confusion about war and the use of weapons. Father, help us to meet you as we continue in our worship. Make us ever mindful of your goodness towards us and strengthen us to be aware of the needs of others. As we pray for peace, give us peace in our hearts. Amen. And in these moments, we pause as we take part in an act of remembrance just where we are.
short days ago, we live and all so sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields, in Flanders fields. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them.
when you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. This morning, we remember two gentlemen that went from this corps and gave of their lives in World War I. We remember John T. Armitage, who served with the King's own Yorkshire Light Infantry and died on the 2nd of December 1917 in Belgium. We remember Isaac Gornell, who served with the Leeds Rifles and he died on the 26th of March, 1918, in France. Lord, we are saddened at the thought of war, of the soldiers who must fight, and all those people who are killed. Today we remember their sacrifice with great sadness. We thank them for what they did for us. We also remember that they won for us a victory, that without their bravery these wars may have been lost, and our lives could have been so very different without the freedom we, enjoy, we so much enjoy. We thank them for what they did for us. We are saddened at the thought of your suffering that you too had to be a great hero and walked to Jerusalem, be arrested, tried and killed on that horrible cross. We thank you for what you did for us. 
we also remember that you won for us a victory, that on Easter morning you rose again and helped us to overcome our human nature so that we might rise again with you. We thank you for what you did for us. And Father, we pray for our world this day. We pray for peace in our world. Father, we pray for the United States of America. We pray for a united people. We pray for acceptance, to accept the outcome of the election they've been involved in this week. Father, we pray for our own country. We pray for our government as they guide us through this most difficult time. Father, we pray that you will give us understanding. And we pray that you will help us live for others and to understand others' points of view. Father, this morning as we have come before you, as we have remembered the sacrifice that men and women have given in war, we also come before you with grateful hearts for the sacrifice that you gave for each of us on the cross and for the hope that your resurrection brings to our lives today. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And we sing our final song together for this morning. A song that is full of challenge, especially in verse 2. A line that always sticks out for me in this song is this line. I've been so loved that I'll risk loving too. I'm grateful to Martin for putting together the video and singing for us our final song this morning. May the commitments that you made earlier in our meeting be reaffirmed through these words for the days, the weeks and the months that lie ahead. Let us sing together. I then shall live.
and through and in me. Your power and glory, let them shine through me. Your hallowed name, oh may I bear with honor, and may your living kingdom come in me. The bread of life, oh may I share with honor, and may you feed a hungry world through me. Well, I hope that you found that service of remembrance helpful this morning. Um, we're not going to give any announcements this morning. We'll post those on our Facebook page later on in the day. So keep an eye on our Facebook page for announcements. So let us just share together a benediction. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths and superficial relationships so that you may love deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression and exploitation of people, so that you may work for justice, freedom and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and turn their pain to joy. And may God bless you with enough foolish mess to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. Amen. So, go make a difference in this world. May God bless you. Stay safe. And we'll see you again next week. Thank you.